May I please welcome Dr. Pirmin Ulman, co-founder and CEO, bscience.net, to please come over to the dais and deliver his deep insights on the viability of solid and semi-solid electrolytes in EV and other applications. Over to you, Mr. Ulman. Many thanks for this uh, great opportunity to uh, present at the first battery show India on the viability of solid and semi-solid electrolytes in EV and other applications. Uh, my name is Permin. My background is in uh, battery, lithium-ion battery materials product development in Switzerland. And uh, while doing this job, uh, together with two uh, friends, we realized, of course, how difficult product development and successful launches still are which is supported by the statistics that 35 to 45% of new high-tech product launches still fail. We think one reason is uh, insufficient uh, uh, objective data for sound decisions for CTOs and R&D departments, including what R&D direction to prioritize measuring which projects are on track, not only internally, also with regards to external technical benchmarks and price and cost targets. So, so uh, the solution, of course, lies in improved decision-making. We would like to make a contribution by offering bscience.net subscriptions, which we uh, sell already to product development groups in Asia, in, North, in America and Europe to, to use machine learning to process publicly available information, in particular the enormous amount of data stored in the patent literature that is very difficult to access, but with machine learning, commercially relevant data points and support for decision making can be identified and provided in a condensed way the decision makers to prioritize, benchmark, and estimate the value creation. So one category that we offer in which we also produced uh, a review is uh, solid state and semi-solid electrolytes for lithium ion batteries. And this is already a selection of electrolytes. It's a, it's a huge field of classes that are pursued by commercial players. First, of course, the liquid carbonates should be mentioned, the current, uh, 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 let's say, workhorse that, however, often have a, a boiling point of not much more than 100 degrees Celsius, which can lead to, to fire and explosion risks, as we know. And uh, on the other hand, it's important to emphasize how multiple classes of all solid electrolytes have already been deployed and launched, uh, starting with uh, um, thin film cells. These uh, have been used in microelectronics and micrometech for many years in extremely small cells. Then the oxides and phosphates deployed in millimeter scale cells, a bit larger size than uh, thin film. Then the sulfides are pursued by very prominent players like Toyota and EV space. But it's important to, to, to be aware that Maxell launched the sulfide electrolyte cell uh, into the market, also in the millimeter scale domain. And then there are the polymer electrolytes, all solid, which are uh, running in real life, Mercedes together with uh, Blue Solutions is, is operating uh, or uh, making e-buses, however, at 80 degrees Celsius operating temperature. So, so that's, uh, in that case, a key, a key uh, 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 limitation, one has to say, um, to, with respect to wider application. And it is a consensus that uh, it should be possible at room temperature. So I'll. Uh, elaborate further on these classes by making this plot um, on uh, uh, ba basically showing applications of very different size and of course historically the liquid electrolyte lithium-ion battery 
has grown out of the electronics domain and then uh, went into EVs. So, so it's interesting uh, to look at this kind of evolution. Uh, as mentioned, the, 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 the thin film cells are used in several years, but there have been some failures bringing them into EVs related to uh, the need for vacuum processing. So, so costs can really be a, a killer for a technology in a certain application. And uh, it's quite the consensus that this has happened here. Therefore, other systems are, are pursued. Uh, oxides, they have also been launched uh, uh, by experienced players from Japan in, in, in small scale. And now there are several who, who pursue basically oxides in EVs. And the properties are very interesting, but the key question is, can high temperature sintering at as high as 1,000 degrees Celsius be done in a very quick fashion? Uh, for example, in, in the gigafactories, electrodes are, are coated at the speed of maybe 20 meters per second. So the question is, can this be done that quickly or not? It's crucial that that is possible if deployment is targeted in EVs. And therefore, a lot of process innovation is targeted, like laser sintering and such approaches. So product development and process development are interesting, uh, important. Uh, then regarding the sulfides, as mentioned, Maxell actually has launched cells, but uh, uh, in the EV space, there has been uh, the recent news that Toyota is more targeting 2027, 20, 28 instead of 25. So here it's kind of, it's special that very small cells have been launched, very large cells are targeted, and there is nothing in between really that I know of in the sense that uh, why have smaller electronic cells not been launched? It might relate to the risk of toxic hydrogen sulfide gas emissions that can occur upon contact with water. So this is, in that sense, a completely new system from a chemistry point of view with completely different risks in production, operation, and recycling. And so it could be that there are in intensive discussions with regulators and, uh, and, and unfortunately the timelines tend to get pushed back in the EV space. Then there are halides, uh, a, a, a very um, a kind of explosion of patent filings in a, in a short time occurred. Often Toyota and Panasonic make Bottom filings in which they use both halides and sulfides in the same cell. So the halides are usually used in the cathode together with the sulfide electrolyte film uh, with the purpose of improving reliability and safety characteristics. So, so deploying sulfides is a very complex uh, story actually when it comes to the, uh, it's a combination of many different uh, uh, inventions and, and different electrolytes, actually, probably. Then the polymers, as mentioned, uh, there is this limitation of 80 degrees Celsius. And then, let's say, one approach is to add some ionic liquids or other liquids. Uh, one has to look at the safety impact. It does not always have to be that bad if the liquid is high boiling. And here, uh, also a company like CATL, of course, the largest manufacturer, is studying such systems and has also announced the product launch. Then what is very important uh, uh, is that uh, composite uh, uh, systems are, are pursued very actively, in which polymers, oxides are combined, often with about 10% liquid although there are some examples where that might be avoided in the future. So these systems are well balanced. The question then is, is there enough differentiation with regards to uh, liquid electrolytes? And that will be the case if uh, um, high energy density is possible with the help of lithium metal or high silicon content. So here it's very important to emphasize, uh, again, also uh, with respect to the prior podium where this was emphasized, 
how interesting Swapa Bolivi battery packs are, especially in areas with very high population density like China and India, because such packs allow for different ways of launching products. Uh, for example, for only one month, such a pack can be used, switch back again. It means one can feed in real life uh, data back into the development loop without having to give a guarantee of, let's say, 10 years up front. So, so that's highly, highly interesting packs in the context of combining different kinds of electrolytes, which is, is one key approach. So if you plot everything again, and I'll be happy to send you the, the presentation uh, if you wish, um, uh, I would argue that these semi-solid systems, they are being launched uh, this year, and so, and so we see very quickly how well it works. Uh, NEO is, is launching the swappable packs, then Prologium is building a gigafactory, so, so th 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 it is to be assumed that there are orders. It's a little bit uh, unclear still who exactly, but the gigafactory is being built. So that happens now while there is somewhat of a of, a, of a, a significant difference in the sense that this all solid uh, novel technology approaches tend to get pushed back most recently by Panasonic Toyota that it's like three years still and then it's of course that kind of means uh, it's maybe not only about process uh, optimization. There might be some science or fundamental engineering in the sense something that is quite new and then the, the risk that something doesn't work in the gigafactory is of course higher. So, so yeah, but it's very interesting to see how it will work out. Very uh, strong players of course, financially strong players are pursuing this. From a chemist's point of view, I'd like to give some uh, uh, information of what could inform future pack and pack design and EV integration. I'm not an engineer, but um, I'd point out that really the current uh, uh, carbonate electrolytes, uh, it, is, it is likely that the upper operation temperature remains at about 55 degrees, while there is really, it's quite convincing that several of these new technologies can be operated to 80 degrees, even higher, but then you have to watch aging. And that presumably is really a relaxation on, on, on the needs with regards to thermal management, although uh, uh, it surely still needed, but, but it's, uh, it's presumably a relaxation. And then regarding safety, this is, that there are very big differences here between a new kind of risk that didn't exist so far, hydrogen sulfide gas emission to the uh, systems by Prologium v Lion that uh, the safety data up to 170 degrees <coughs> seems to look quite good, even if there's some liquid, but if the liquid boils at a much higher temperature, it's a different story than if it boils at 110 degrees. And so finally, there is the question uh, of cell to chassis feasibility, of course, very much an engineering problem. And, and here uh, uh, it's summarized again what, uh, what kind of constraints uh, could exist. Finally, pressure, uh, it's often a secret is <coughs> made out of at which pressure a system is operated. I'd argue that it, <coughs> a pressure can be used sometimes to hide an underlying vulnerability or weakness of a chemistry that might, and in that sense, uh, on one hand, it's important to know at what pressure certain results have been obtained and, uh, and if there is pressure, additional checks basically have to be made to avoid certain ways of failure that cannot occur in the same way if there is <coughs> no or very small amount of pressure. Uh, Here is my contact information. Uh, I'd be happy to answer any questions later on and please feel free 
to contact me also if you wish to receive the slides. Many thanks. Thank you so much, Dr. Pirmin Ulman, sir, for being here and sharing his deep insights on the topic. May I please take the honor to share a token of appreciation on behalf of Informa Markets India.